Okay. Uh, ten they, seconds remaining. I want to say almost exclusively, like nine out of ten times, Box Five will be playing the Star Uh I think they like it as a solution to Mars. It's a really good lane matchup, so maybe they will do different lanes. And the reason he's such a good friend of Coddle is that Slardar sometimes runs into mana problems in fights, but on top of that, you obviously get double Slithering Crush, right? What's the cooldown of that spell on level four? Let me check. Uh, don't see much Slardar nowadays, so it's eight seconds. And, you know, that means you crush, you get chakra, you crush again. Um, mm. I don't think you can fully chain a BKB target, right? Because chakra Liquid cuts off six and slithering crush, or not a BKB target, but prevent a guy from BKBing. And slithering crush is a one second stun. So you can BKB in between the crushes, but if you don't have BKB, then the Slardar is very powerful. All right. Well, Luna is going to be the pick. So. Mm. We've seen this from both teams uh, on occasion, of course. Yeah. Now, Ten seconds remaining. I mean, I think more times than not, I feel like at least memory serves me, it's Five with Avenge, but that doesn't remaining. look like that's going to work out this game unless you have some crazy... I mean, Phoenix, in theory, mm -hmm. no, there's no way. Mars is the off lane. I, mean, this, I think this is almost set in stone, right? Oracle play, 5, Phoenix you play 4. Mid-Venge. Something How, OG has done, for example. Back. It's not out of the question. How long ago? I mean, we've seen Venge in almost any, every position in the history of Dota, right? Throughout yeah. the history. But how recent are we talking with that? A week ago. But it's only oh. OG, though. Yeah, there, there's. I don't think I've seen another team play mid-Venge. There might have been one other team or one game or whatever that I didn't watch. But for the most part, teams play Venge as support and sometimes offlane. S4 Ten had one against Fly the Moon maybe. the other day. Uh, they did not win that game, obviously. Fly Moon went 2 0 twice. Well, but honestly, as crazy as it sounds, Liquid could technically take Venge themselves because they love it. And you have a, your core picked already, which you're saying is their flex in theory, just depending on what Fly the Moon goes for. Yes, correct. So if it looks good, Venge could be your last pick for them could as well. Could be for both teams, absolutely. Uh, I do think what Fly the Moon needs in their lineup is a way of pushing towers, though. Like you're set up so hard to keep this key hero alive that wants to group up and push. So I think heroes that come to mind for their strategy would be like Necrophos or Dragon Knight or uh, the Huskar you mentioned would be nice still. I know you're into Slardar. It's a bit dangerous, but you have two purges from the Oracle and you're going to buy a BKB yourself. So uh, it still is a possibility if they want to try to push this one down. Because um, if you don't, like, what does your lineup really have, right? Like, you don't have any great catch low cooldown fighting lineup, whereas Liquid, they want to run at you and fight you. They have Caudal Ember, they have Slardar, Marana, just tons of stuns, activity. Uh, the wave clear is good when you have Caudal almost by default, unless you really pick bad wave clears. Uh, Caudal Ember take care of that. Um, they recently ran a Luna Viper. <laughs> Viper mid, obviously, in that case. That seems a yeah. bit weird. I don't know how that would work this game, but... Just throwing it out there. I mean, that's an interesting. Just, there's no, there's no incentive to pick Viper here. I think you don't know the there's matchup. No passes that you're really, yeah, exactly. Breaking. Yeah, for sure. You're not well, breaking Bash anything. Syndrome. You don't know the matchups. <laughs> yeah, break, break, uh, Bash of the Deep. Sick. Very important. All right. Well, like you said, Fly the Moon gets the first crack at this, and Team Liquid can choose what position their Marana essentially is. What this ends up being. There's actually a bit of trivia there. If you like your trivia with Slardar. His names, his spell names got changed, remaining. I want to say, two years ago in Dota 2, or maybe yeah. a bit more. They used to be called the remaining. same forever. And they got yep. changed because people were like, Slardar's spell Team names are boring. That was literally it. Dragon. Nobody was really I missed down. them. There's the dragon. I missed them. The way. They were literally DK? called Sprint, Slithering Crush, Bash, and Amplify Damage. <laughs> so, that was my favorite name in the entire yeah. game. I was actually so I love Amplify Damage. I still call it Amplify Damage. damage. I think. Yeah, I agree. Corrosive Haze just doesn't have the same ring to it. You know? All right, final pick Lana is a TA, so even more Ooh. minus armor. So yep. they have a crazy Roche lineup now. Uh, Marana will yeah. all likelihood be the support, I would assume. I mean, we've seen... How long ago was a Slardar or 4 occasionally? Is that possible as well? It's very unlikely. It's very long ago. I'm pretty sure it's yeah. Taiga Marana. Um, yeah, love the love the the TA last pick. There's no bad matchups in lane. He's either going to face Dragon Knight, Mars, or Luna, and he can win against all three. So he'll get a lot of farm go jungle, synergize with Slardar with minus armor. Uh, actually, some synergy with Caudal too. You have insane Roche potential with double meld. It goes so fast. Um, also, getting extra refraction is nice. This is the kind of lineup you want to play Coddle with. I just love playing Coddle in games where I feel like 
if I go to basically any of my teammates, I help them so much. But then when I play pubs and first pick Coddle, we end up with some random stuff that can't use Chakra, and then I feel pretty sad because it's such a big part of the hero. But this is a great. But he has Ignis Fatus, no matter what, Cinder, and always good. He does. Always excellent. That's what you gotta hold on to. Unlike this Dragon Knight set, which is hideous. That is just awful. My God. Was yeah, that in one of the caches, Cinderin? Was that voted in in one of the caches? We need to look that one up. For sure. Yeah, yeah it's it's decent. All right. Why I could be wrong. So maybe the polys, maybe the poly limit on Dragonite is super low because that just looks mm, looks like we it's have from different Minecraft tastes in cosmetics quite a lot. Yeah, you're a big Minecraft fan for sure. I mean, the, oh, the, absolutely. The, uh, yes, I love the Minecraft. Marana mount all the time. Marana mount is excellent, Cinderin. Has yeah. nothing to do with the fact that it's yeah. a Dota Cinema. The Marana was from our Captain's Draft tournament. That's right. Well, how many Good years ago? Blast was that from the past. Five, five years ago. It was the last. Was it only five? The, I think so. It was 2015. It was the last Dota 2 tournament where creators got to put in items connected with the anything. <laughs> no, no, no. So. That's not true. Is that it? is not is technically it? true. Captain's Draft 3 one? technically had some stuff. It was a oh, chest okay. and stuff. Oh, yeah. But but it was the last yeah, one that had a compendium, chest. I believe. If I'm not and a directly attached set. You had a chest, Actually, right? Has there ever been a tournament to... since that had a, just a single set connected with it? Mm, I don't know. Not sure. I, I think we can easily say that was the last third-party tournament that has been profitable in Dota 2. <laughs> so we'll just go with that. <laughs> but, uh... Actually, the Marana wasn't even the set, right? This was an extra thing. This was the mount, and it came... Did this one come with the compendium? It did, yes. right? This came with the compendium, yeah. and we had a lich item, and then the full juggernaut set was the standalone set. So yeah, this was a compendium piece, actually. That is true. That's right. So, Good old days. Still holds up, though. Good old looks, days. looks wonderful. What a great mount. Yeah, Wonderful, wonderful. So whose lineup do you like overall? I really like... Uh, like last game, I said it was pretty even for me. I like Liquid more in this game. I think the lanes are going to work very nicely for them. I like the flow of the strategy they're running. Uh, to me, Flight of Moon's... It's like the strategy, it's not really doing it justice way. to say it has one play, but I think you know what I mean when you look at the picks, right? Like, they need to group up around Dragon Knight and find team fights because their catch is limited, their cooldowns are very big, uh, Eclipse, Dragon Form, Egg, and Arena, whereas the other team has Slardar Stun, Ember Chains, TA is online all the time, Mirana. There's not a single long cooldown on the Radiant except Caudal Ulti. Like, everybody else is just ready to go all the time. And yeah. I love that in this patch when you can draft the lineup like that, where the lanes also work. Uh, and on top of that, they even have good matchups. It's not just okay. The lanes are actually going to be nice. I think Cod Ember will be happy here against <laughs> Mars Oracle. Uh, the TA will free farm mid against DK, most likely. Or well, Liquid free farm gets is a big three break. out of four bounties. So yep, good job to too. Boxy getting a nice Slytherin crush. Wait, was that always called... Was it just Crush, or was it actually no, still Slytherin? No, it was called Slytherin Crush. crush. It was definitely okay, so called Slytherin Crush. Changed. Okay. That well, was the one spell name he had. Oh, the arrow connects thanks to the setup from Boxy. Decently uh, durationed as well. v taking heavy damage. Boxy again with the Crush. There's going to be a death one way or the other, but the question is who gets first blood? Okay, I no, was there wrong. Nobody died, Cinderin. Someone's going to die, I swear. Eventually. At some point this game. Yes. <laughs> I mean, that... Has there ever been a game of Dota where that hasn't happened? There's been no. a game of Dota at pro level where a player didn't die or get an assist. And there's only one game I remember. It was in Dota 1. <laughs> Merlini played a game of Medusa. And he ended the game 0-0-0. And I think it was 30 minutes long. It was with... I think it was... Was he K playing Lycan? Medusa. It was Chaos Int oh, or Medusa. Nirvana Int. He farmed for 30 minutes and then they won. He <laughs> never got involved. I remember that. I don't think that's ever happened in Dota 2. But, oh, bottom lane, yeah. Mickey is taking a ton of damage, and that's going to be your first blood. I was right. Somebody did die, but it's for Flight of Moon's favor this time. Did not think they were going to get a kill that early before they're even level 2. Mickey just overestimating how tanky he is. There was no spear involved. It was just flat out God's Rebuke plus Fortune's End. And that's a great, great start for General on the Mars. Um, how do you skill the Ember Spirit in this lane, knowing that Flame of Art can be dispelled immediately? Do you even do you just hold on to your point? Four, four, do you zero. just not even skill it? Okay. And I think you go four four zero just because again the synergy with Coddle, right? Whenever Ember gets these uh, these levels up in slight chain, you make Coddle so much stronger as a teammate. 
uh, Flame Guard. It's nice to cut the cooldown on Flame Guard, but I would say in most cases in this lane, you don't skill that Flame Guard unless you have to. And it's kind of a no-brainer in this one, right? So, yeah. Oh, good harass again coming in. Yeah, Illuminate comes in, clips Aloha He's... Dance. Mickey though, it's in a bit of trouble. General has the spear, and it's going to be enough to take him out. So that is a second kill for Fly to Moon in this bot lane. And Sania is going to be chased down next to his tier one. Ooh, not quite enough damage from General. Nice attempt on the God's Rebuke, but taking full... is sitting at 60 HP. Oh, Oof. the spear again. <laughs> He's taking it's full advantage one. of the uh, Aura Venom, by the way. This is a great item for Mars when you're playing against a melee hero in lane. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, was not expecting them to get these kills. It's just really well done on Flight of Moon's part. Um, getting off to this head start. So very, Stop very lane, important for the game. Bash game. into the arrow, but always want to fly. He's going to get leapt on. No, no range there, and the salve's going to keep him safe. As the courier has come as well. Nice attempt here. I mean, this is a very aggressive lane for Liquid, so... Uh, I mean, what do you think of this lane as a whole, before we get to the other ones in the top? The Slaughter Marana is... Just the lane matchup here is fine for them, but I worry for them when Phoenix gets level 3, which happened just now. Like, Slardar doesn't like playing against Fire Spirits. It's the primary reason that Flight of Moon put the lanes this way is they wanted to just ruin Slardar's time. The hero needs to hit. Mm -hmm. And... Getting this massive attack slow, it's 80 attack on level 2. You just can't get bash procs reliably. You're going to see now Boxy has to yield. Like, he can't fight back. Yeah, he's, uh, he's basically losing all his health here. Yeah, if... He does have some wand charges, so yeah. stay safe now. It's not good, though. I'll have to solve yeah. after the fact. I might have to eat my words again. a little bit. I thought the laning stage for Liquid would go better than it, than it has. I thought this top lane would also do a bit better. But the, the Phoenix has definitely done a great job here threatening Boxy so much. He's falling very far behind, actually, already. In yep. his lanes. They're gonna try. Another bash. Good or another crush into arrow, but always want to fly will live. But damage has been done. What about the mid lane? I mean, TA against Dragonite sounds amazing for Koikfa. Is that not like a god tier matchup? It's pretty even in the start, and then TA it. just wins because she can jungle faster, right? Oh, Boxy's dead. They're gonna trade. One for one. Um, but yeah, there's tons of TA lanes like this, where you're like, yeah, on paper, it's fine, you know. Uh, the hero laning against TA can draw, but then this happens, right? And Dragon Knight can't match this speed. He can't go and just farm the side camp every time he pushes out the wave. He has mana problems, so he needs to get... First of all, you need lots of levels in Breathe Fire, and then the access to your camp is also... It's more inconvenient, because he's dire. It's easier to do this on Radiant. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so Kokyo will absolutely pull ahead. And you need to deal with these damn annoying side blades all the time. I hate laning against this hero. Yeah. It's one of my least favorite heroes ever to lane against. No matter what I play, really, just laning against side blades is just so annoying. Especially as a melee. Very, very difficult. Yeah. And the fact kinda... that it's pure damage uh, just adds insult to injury. Bottom lane, Aloha Dance. Takes some damage. Slight's not enough to finish him off, but. Both members of Flight of Moon are extremely low right now. Illuminate comes in. It will connect on General, but not a whole lot. Yeah. But now we're starting to see the power of this lineup. Uh, Absolutely. This lane, I should say. And, uh, you know, you're buying this raindrop on Mars. Uh, the question is just how long is it going to last? Like, there's some heroes. It's, it's one of those damn it if you do, damn it if you don't situations where if you don't have this raindrop, you're very susceptible to dying. But if you do, the enemy team is just going to burn it off you, right? Every Illuminate, every Slight Chains, you're going to start losing these raindrops really fast. Uh, whereas sometimes you can buy raindrops against a lane where it's going to be crucial in key moments, but here it could just end up fading away, and then you spend 200 gold on that. Um, mm -hmm. which is very annoying. So, yeah. Another part of Caudle being as amazing as it is with this kind of hero. Just the constant harass. We're going to rotate here. Aloha Dance. find Aloha Dance mid, but yeah. Iceberg's already in his dragon form. Hasn't really done any damage to the tower as of yet. It's hard for him uh, to do against TA. Yeah, just pushing out sure. the wave. I mean, the one good thing about being in dragon form is at least you have some form of uh, an ability to take oh, off his refraction, at least to a degree. He's in trouble. Slight chains. Insania. Gonna get rooted for now. Mickey is gonna force everybody off though. Insania. Illuminate is coming. There's a searing chains. It clips him. Aloha Dance goes down to the grave as well. General is able to spear away, but. Yeah. They're Looks losing like this bottom lane now. That's after getting first blooded too. 
They got two kills. Oh, top lane, Cinder and Boxy. <coughs> he's on the run. Oh, Fire he's gonna live does here. Connect. Barely. Tango. Yeah, it's forty good. HP. Yeah, he's the he's the sacrificial hero in this uh, liquid draft right now. He's not having a good time, but all the other four heroes, I would argue, are having a great time. Tiger's level five and a half on the former Ana. No, oh, still harassing Boxy here. Oh, he hit an arrow. He got always oh, want to fly wow. with the ward. Damn. Easy kill. Yeah, that was nice. <laughs> And yeah, I imagine this bottom lane if they didn't get in this early pressure where Fly to Moon did a great job uh, without that early start. Man, this would have been miserable for Mars. At least he's still hanging in there, but it's only going to get harder. He has to spend all this gold on Raindrop and he has to spend gold on Salve. And it's just, uh, yeah, it's a problem. Oh, an arcane ring for him. So to injury. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> The only Perfect. limiting factor for Ember right now is honestly cooldown. Like, he could just spam out as much as he wants, almost, if he didn't have cooldowns. Yeah. No just doubt about it. Now, well, he will be going for the phase boots on that Ember Spirit. Mid lane, it looks like we're going to see Aloha Dance get dropped by Koikva. Iceberg was not there in time. Does have the Arcane Rune, so look for him to get as much value out of this Dragon Form as possible. As he pops it right now. He has to be careful with the Side Blades, of course. There's that damage over time. Spelling the refraction. Very useful. But still untouched he on the really tower. Really can't push these waves. I mean, yeah, the, the waves are just being pushed so much faster from Koik, but he even has time to go to the jungle to get some extra farm. He'll be back in the lane to prevent any damage coming from Iceberg. Does come in now. We'll probably get a couple right clicks, but for a Dragonite, this is your second Elder Dragon form. You're not really getting. Uh, amazing value, but it is on a lower cooldown thanks to the arcane rune. Now, what kind of kill potential do you have? Is arrow? Does he just have to hit an arrow for the this to be a kill, or is it just too difficult? Yeah, probably. Even with an arrow, it might not be a kill, and I don't think it's necessary. Like, there's other and better plays on the map. If Mirana wants to move off top, you can go and threaten bottom. Slight chains into arrows, super easy to land. Um, you can even just run around and farm some jungle, some big creeps. As long as the lanes are as stable as this, it's not a big deal. Yeah, Boxy isn't too happy, to, I guess, but his lane has been really hard, and he has the same as Mars. So it's not even, you know, it's not even that bad. Uh, Tiger so might if, end up going Luna hunting. As if Mickey didn't have enough uh, mana regen. He has a royal jelly now. Uh, oh, God. So it's, <laughs> it's going to be never-ending, it seems. And that's really good on TA, by the way. The jelly. They're gonna go for the Fine outpost, ancients. but Fly to Moon. Yeah, they see Insania, and they're just gonna let that go. So, it'll be a one for one for each respective side. And as for the bounties, uh, Liquid might have the better of this if they go get these top two. Yeah, Mirana will get. Yeah, they'll get three out of four again, right? So. It's just, the like, the, the strategy of this game, Liquid are just getting so much more out of the map. They're already beginning to farm Ancients with their TA. It was a double stack. Their Dire hasn't stacked it yet, even though they have Luna and potentially Dragonite on level 12 that can farm it with Dragon Form. Uh, this is a big Their lanes are going here. very well. There's no threat Ooh. to their towers. Arrow connects on Mars, but there's Iceberg revealing himself from the invisibility, but the reinforcements from Liquid are here. And there's the Ignis Fatis onto Mars inside his own arena. He's going to pin Insania to the, the walls. See who gets the kill first. Looks like Insania will go down, but it's going to be a trade, a one for one, and one that Liquid will be more than happy with. Looks like Oracle is next on the list. And the chase continues as Mickey, looking for Always Want to Fly, does have Egg, but not going to extend it. Yeah. He wouldn't have got it off. The TA could have run up and just hit the Supernova together with Ember, and they would have managed to get it anyway. Even with the Fire Spirit on Mickey, he knows he's dead. So he saves the key this cooldown the, there. This is the third Elder Dragon form now, Cinderin. And the yeah. tower is at 1536 HP right now. And like you said, these stacks are available for the taking on the Radiant side. I mean, these are insane. Koifa is going to go super Dyer's ham right now. Tower is As I believe, yeah, he has Deso already coming to him. So they Blink can roast so fast. He's level four meld and corrosive haze, with Caudal giving him mana for the meld. That's a the lot of amplified damage. Oh, quite attack. a bit. Oh my god, he's so rich. Wait, how many CS does he have? He has more than ten CS. One twenty. One hundred twenty-five. I mean, a lot 11, of those are neutrals, but still, yeah. It's crazy. It's very, very high. So, what is Flight of Moon's strategy here? Like. 
do you just try to gank Koikva? I mean, as difficult as that may seem. I feel like you need to make a team move and execute some sort of team fight, but the problem is Luna is going to the farming build, so they don't have Eclipse. Like, for your Phoenix and your Mars to feel like they have a place in the game, there needs to be a big scale fight. Uh, but Liquid just haven't really given them a big team fight at all. It's just becoming these like skirmishes where they poke and prod. Now Aloha Dance might almost die here actually to Mickey. He's just gonna back off. Oh, and Tiger. Tiger with a snipe. It looks like. Yeah. Very nice. That was. Uh... Unintended, I think. <laughs> was it? Maybe not. Didn't he mean? Well, I think that arrow was intended for him. Okay. I mean, Phoenix could have so. tanked it for sure. But, uh, <laughs> probably didn't know that his teammate was so low. <laughs> Either way, uh, damage was done to this tier one tower. And I mean, if you're liquid, uh, pretty sure you don't even feel. Dyer's bottom tower I mean, is under attack. Th this is actually a good question, as it looks like there might be a potential gank here on Boxy in the top lane. There's the blink being revealed for the Dragonite, Iceberg and Company. Arena is used into the spear, and this will be a kill. No reinforcements here as of yet. But on Liquid's side, are you just happy? As long as they're not taking towers, you just keep yeah. farming, you keep increasing your, your net worth lead. Liquid has played this game a lot of times, and they have played the other lineups draft as well. So I think they have a very good understanding of where they stand in this game and what the next goal should be. Now Dragonite is going to try to push bottom, but guess what? There's a level 4 Illuminate Caudal sitting here, so they have to dive. Yeah. And that can end They'll really poorly. Oh boy. Double TP. Ignis Fatis has come down, but it's not very well placed. It'll keep Insania alive, though. Which I guess is definitely needed. Iceberg. Sometimes you miss every spell, but they defended the tower for now, at least. Yes, that is the important factor. Iceberg's dragon form is about to end. Dyer's top tower is under attack. And they might but this is the this team anyway, move, though. right? There's the team move. Yeah. And Liquid felt forced fortified. to drop the Ignis. Unfortunately for Insania, it was not a very good one. So now they're going to yield and give this up. So finally, Vitamoon get on the board here with a tower. Uh, but they have to bring four heroes. And I think it's the right move to make. I think you have Dyer's to do something like this. And maybe had to do it earlier. Attack. It's kind of like he hit a brick wall mid with Dragon Knight for five minutes. This move could have maybe happened attack. earlier. Um, but now they at least get it done. Still a very big It will be a trade of towers, though. I mean, yeah. he take one on his own. So that's obviously not a favorable one. trade. The They're going full minus armor. He's rushing Solar Crust. They just want to... Oh, wait, wait what's nice. their total? Okay, let's do a, a, a little bit of math here. Attack. So... Okay. Let's see. So Corrosive Haze, let's say they're maxed out. Corrosive Haze is 18 on level 3. Meld is 8, so that's 26. Then you have the Deso, that's 34. Six. Wait, did I say 26? So 32. Mm -hmm. And then you have Solar Crest on top, which is another minus 8. So that's 40 minus armor they can do to either and Roche or a hero. If you get a Stygian and you hold on to this game till 60 minutes, that is 50. I think right. that's their strategy. Mm. Don't win yet. Do you it in get an style. Orb of corruption, of course. Of destruction, true. sorry. Of destruction could help. Well, you can't hold both, though, right? That's that is kind of the issue. But if you layer it with somebody else and attacking yeah. the same target, then sure. I am not expecting a sixty-minute game here, but all of destruction is definitely possible. Yes. So that would be okay. That that more. is more reasonable. I will admit. Crazy stuff. That's. Uh, I want to see the Roche this game. I really want all of them to do it together with the max <laughs> minus armor they have. That'll be sick. Yeah. It's crazy how fast it's gonna go. I am in. Tier one tower looks to be what. Liquid wants. Of course, it's not their entire team. Unlike Flight of Moon, which they have four members here right now trying to defend. I mean, this just Dyer's feels very snowballing. It's 7k net worth lead, no, 6k Radiant's now for, for Liquid. This is, is an attack. extremely early stage. Here we go with the Roche, but this will probably be contested. Always Want to Fly does have the egg. It's only level one right now. Dyer's Moonlight Shadow, Slight, doing attack. some good damage. Arrow oh, does connect okay. onto Mars. Yes. Roche is not going. Oh, Ignis Fatis on the majority of Flight and Moon. A really good zoning ult. Egg is used. In addition, as Aegis is taken now, but the egg actually goes off. It connects on two. Eclipse is more than enough to take out Ember Spirit. So Liquid looks like they're going to lose at minimum two heroes. And Sandy is going to be the second. Here comes the, the crush. The buybacks are here from Ember Spirit. Liquid need to win this fight, and Iceberg and Company need to run away. Aloha Dance. Very low on HP, uses a very early ultimate on Iceberg, who gets arrowed. He's toast. Does blink out. He's at half HP, though, and they have the chase. They have more than enough. It did cost them a buyback, but again, Aegis yeah. is their way, still intact. 
Yeah, and that wasn't that. even clean from Liquid, to be honest. They they miscommunicated a little bit. Insania started hitting the egg, then he was like, okay, this is not happening. And Mick was like, no, 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 I'm coming back in. And then they both got caught with the egg on one HP. If they committed to it together the whole time, they clean yeah. house here. Or if they if neither of them went for it, they also would have cleaned house. Because like the supernova being used on top of that Ignis, job well done. You could have backed out. The enemy team was stuck in place and you weren't. So uh, just... Like regardless, it's it's a different judgment call to make, but you're happy with the outcome regardless if you're liquid. You got the Aegis on the TA. Oh, Aloha Dance, goodbye. Nice knowing you. And finally, this tier one tower will go down to the right click of Koikva. And yeah, this ain't looking pretty for Flight of Moon. Uh, unlike the previous game where we thought that they were actually in control, and then a few mistakes, which Liquid capitalized on, helped turn the tide. But this time it just feels like all liquid. Yeah. I just, I love their strategy too. It, it's such a good lineup. Um, I mean, it's old school, right? Old school minus armor strat. Maybe not the exact same heroes every time. Usually there's a Venge involved in this, but still cool to see after all these years. Iceberg working towards his BKB. I mean, what do you go for if you're Flight of Moon? They have the initiation, they have double blink dagger the DK and Mars. So you have initiation. Always want to fly. Yeah. Obviously, the egg working with the arena. Top tower Amazing synergy. Top. You have you can keep people alive with Aloha Dance, but where exactly is your damage? It's supposed to be Luna, yeah. but it's just too early for her to be really that, that online. I feel like fortified. talking about the items is... I would rather just focus on the plays first. And if you feel like you can't make the plays without said items, then top tower is under attack. then either you misplayed the game very badly or your draft is just too weak against this type of strategy. Dyer's like when you have this strong team fall. fight and it's 15 minutes into the game, uh, now it's 19, but you're struggling to even initiate and get anything done with your ults, you have a problem oh strategically. Uh, I think rather than waiting for <laughs> items, now that they have this mantle, I think you go fight. Like it, the longer you wait, the harder it's gonna yeah. get. You're gonna get picked off. You're going to lose more map control. Uh, I know you're fighting against gonna, There you go. There's an attempt. This. Mars will onto two with the Phoenix Egg. They're doing a good job of zoning with it. They find the Coddle, but that might be it for now. And he's going to buy back into the game, in fact. And here comes Dragonite getting destroyed with this minus armor. Holy Jesus. He just disappeared. That is not a Dragonite anymore. Luna, in the meantime, pops the Manta. Looks like she will get netted. And that brings oh her to her death as well. A triple kill for Koikva. Yeah. I mean, if they have the buyback, I mean, they didn't even need it, honestly. The thing is, this they got crushed, but it was still... I'm not sure if that Literally. was the exact jump, but it was the right thing to do to look for something. It just... The coordination wasn't perfect because they jumped Coddle and Ember, but they didn't have any follow-up stun on the Ember to get him killed in the arena, so all they got was a Coddle and they used a lot of spells, and now you're in this position where you can get turned on. If they somehow found an opening on the Ember or another high-value hero than just the Coddle, this fight could have gone very well, and it was the kind of thing they needed to try. You can't just accept being Dyer's dominated on the map like this all the time. You have to take a risk, and if that was a low chance play, so be it. You gotta, you gotta play for something. Yep. And totally arrow on agree. Dragon Knight again. Iceberg. Oh boy, a crush onto two heroes. Boxy and company just tearing through Dyer's Flight of Moon. Is under and this yeah, tier three pretty. tower is a goner. I mean, Aegis is still intact. BKB is almost online again for Koikva, and it is the nine second is version. Arrow. Oh. I thought he dodged it, but actually he did not. Manta did not help. Down goes your Luna, and down goes Fly to Moon in a Mega Stomp game two. I'm actually really surprised that after that performance in game one that they come out like this, but Liquid just playing out of their minds right now. I mean, it's, it's what I was talking about after game one, right? Like, you've won four games in a row in this tournament, you've looked pretty hot, and now you face your first loss. What are you gonna do? Are you gonna make draft adaptations? Are you gonna keep playing the same kind of style? And they made a massive draft adaptation. They played five different heroes in game, than in game one. Uh, they played a totally different style. So like in game one, they were way more fight hungry, they had stronger laning, uh, more tempo, and in this game they're Kind of in a way maybe overcompensating on the big team fight aspect and less Dyer's on the tempo for their like their attack. players' playstyles, right? Dyer's the players that this team have are very forward. explosive and can play super fast. You have cores like General and Iceberg. You know, get them in there. If it's a good meta for fighting, I think a team like this should look to fight a lot. Uh, but yeah, Liquid just had their number completely after game one. That's how it goes sometimes. Sometimes one close game turns into a complete stomp second game. We've seen it a lot of times. And uh, Flyman just look a bit broken. 
Yeah, in terms of the laning stage, as we're going to see uh, Iceberg get ganked here. Amplified damage, oh Desolator. My He's done. The arrow didn't again. even get there. <laughs> that was their challenge on Dota Plus Plus. It's a secret. Oh, look up, Mickey. Nice turn. Secret uh, app created just for pro players. Kill him before the arrow connects. There's the Ignis Fatis. And again, the right click from Koikva is just decimating everybody. Double kill for him. And GG is called. Wow. Oh, snap. Minus armor is good. So it seems. That was really just well executed down. from Liquid. Yeah. I and feel they... like the. I was going to mention this, Cinder. I don't know what you would change necessarily, but it felt like. Do you do something different with DK in the mid lane? Do you. Like, what can he do? Yeah. It feels like he's such a, a static hero. You know, he's he wants to play mid. He wants to push that tower. If you can't do that, it feels like you shouldn't have picked that hero. Right? He's stuck in this game because the rest of their lineup doesn't want to rotate with him. Luna still wants to farm, so she can't join. And the support duo is Oracle Phoenix. So is any of these heroes going to come gank mid? Maybe Phoenix could have tried it. I think there was a possible play with Icarus Dive Fire Spirits together with DK killing TA through refraction. Uh, but like after the first 10 minutes, or even the first eight, the laning stage bottom Mars was struggling, so he had to catch up. He wasn't moving. Uh, and that is even when their first two minutes went very well. Both top and bottom, the laning stage for FTM actually went, went well. It, it wasn't a bad start in the first two minutes, but then the next five were bad. And that's where your lineup really needed to get something done. Perhaps it's easy to say in hindsight, perhaps it's the kind of game where Luna has to fight and actually max out Lucent Beam and Eclipse so that your lineup can come together at the right time. Because the writing on the wall here is that Liquid's just going to outfarm you. Right? TA is totally free. You have Ember Caudal pushing out waves and fighting you nonstop. You need to be able to fight back more frequently and faster. Uh, so, yeah. The I think this is a big the, strategic uh, The Radiant top side towards the secret shop was pretty defining. Uh, they had all those stacks for TA, for Team Liquid, and yeah. Dragon I had the invis, and that looked like a good opportunity for them to actually do something, but it just went horribly, horribly wrong. And even though they were already behind at that point, that's when it just got eaten, like, to a point where it felt like there's no way they can come back in this game. I mean, Koikva ends the game 12-0. and 0. I mean, we talked about the minus armor. Obviously, that's more of a strategic decision all around from each respective hero, yeah. but he played really well. I think everybody on Liquid played played very very well this game uh the only thing i can really put a, a finger on is the slight miscommunication about the one egg at the roche pit and then the first minute at the bottom lane perhaps where you could have pro possibly cut those deaths on ember but like outside of that it was almost a perfect game from liquid just good movements good yeah, awareness the, of when to get roche so. the egg was level one too i believe that's five hits so it actually doesn't yeah. really take much of a commitment correct um yeah. so yeah definite miscommunication there but that's very little uh, in terms of the the negatives here for Team Liquid as they take this series two to zero, so that'll do it for Fly the Moon from for this series at least as they continue on into the group stage. So that is it for us today, Sindarin. We'll see you guys next time on this on the episode 23rd. <laughs> on the twenty third of this episode of Team Liquid versus Fly the Moon for the Beyond Epic series. Until next time, friends.